Welcome to Crash News. Today is May 20, 2025. Imagine having, say, a coding assistant that actually understands what you want and, well, just writes the code. Or a health system that spots the early uh, whispers of a pandemic before it really explodes. Picture traffic flowing so smoothly you almost forget what a traffic jam feels like. It's a bit like science fiction, right? Hmm. Maybe a few years ago, but not anymore. Exactly. These things are actually starting to happen now thanks to some major breakthroughs in artificial intelligence. So today we're doing a deep dive into these advancements. We want to understand not just what's happening, but you know why it really matters to you. Think of this as your uh, daily dose of AI education. We sift through all the noise, pull out the key insights, and try to make it engaging. Right. We've gathered a whole stack of sources today, everything from healthcare innovation, transportation stuff, uh, right through to the cutting edge of AI and software development. And uh, AI vision tech, too. That's growing incredibly fast. Yeah, our mission today is really to cut through the hype, give you a clear picture of the real-world impact. Okay, before we properly get started, uh, a quick brain tickler for you. What's the name of OpenAI's newest AI tool, the one designed specifically to help with software engineering? Good one. Keep that in mind. We'll reveal the answer later on. Now, look, we know AI can sometimes sound, well, a bit technical like a foreign language almost. Yeah, but Lee. So whenever we hit a term that might need a little unpacking, we'll pause and uh, explain it, make sure we're all on the same page. And if you find this kind of in-depth look valuable and you want to help us keep it free and accessible, well, please take a moment to rate, like, and subscribe wherever you happen to be listening. Yeah, that really helps. And we also have a growing Discord community. Great place for deeper discussion on these topics. Absolutely. And for those who want to support us directly, maybe get some exclusive content, uh, check out our Patreon. Think of this not just as news, but really as your ongoing education in this, well, rapidly changing world of AI. Okay, let's get into it then. Right. So the COVID-19 pandemic, it really... Um, it shone a spotlight on a critical need, didn't it? Better tools to see these health crises coming. Absolutely. And it turns out AI is now being uh, deployed right on that front line. It's analyzing just enormous amounts of information. Like what kind of info? Well, everything. Global news reports, uh, social media trends, airline passenger data, even traditional epidemiological figures all pulled together. Wow. And the gold is what? Early detection. Exactly. The sheer volume of data. It's something humans just can't process effectively in real time. But AI can sift through it looking for those subtle patterns, those anomalies. That might signal an outbreak way before we'd normally spot it. Precisely. Weeks, maybe even months earlier. The idea is to give public health officials that crucial head start and also to model how a disease might spread. Better decisions, faster responses. Makes sense. And it's not just about global health crises, is it? AI is also starting to reshape our daily journeys. Transportation. Yeah, there's a kind of quiet revolution happening there. Think about it. Traffic jams becoming rare. Buses arriving exactly on schedule. That would be nice. Wouldn't it? AI is really good at optimizing these complex systems. So in transport, you might have AI algorithms uh, dynamically changing traffic light timings based on real-time flow. Okay. Or maybe predicting when a specific bus needs maintenance before it breaks down and causes delays. It's all about using data to make the whole network more efficient, more predictable. Right, using data smarter. Mm. Now, let's shift to a, well, a truly massive challenge. Ending world hunger. It's a goal humanity's grappled with forever. Mm, a huge one. But there's growing optimism, apparently, that AI could be a really powerful tool here. Yeah. Helping us tackle it as some sources put it, smarter and faster. Yeah, but it's important to see AI as an enabler here, right? It can do amazing things like analyzing agricultural data to optimize crop yields, predict pests, streamline food supply chains. Minimize waste, that kind of thing. Exactly. But it can't solve the underlying socioeconomic factors that cause hunger. It's not a magic bullet. No, of course not. But its ability to process and make sense of all the complex data involved in food production and distribution that makes it pretty much indispensable in the global effort. Okay, shifting gears again, let's talk about information itself, journalism. AI is popping up more and more in newsrooms. It is, for tasks like uh, transcribing interviews, which takes ages manually, or translating articles, even generating basic news reports. Like weather or financial summaries. Yeah, or maybe water quality reports, things like that. Factual, data-driven stuff. But this obviously brings up some, well, pretty important ethical question. Of what accuracy, bias. Exactly. How do you ensure AI-generated content is accurate, transparent, and free from bias? 
who's responsible if an AI makes a mistake in a news story? Mm, tricky questions. Very. It's about balancing the efficiency gains with the core principles of journalism. It frees up journalists for deeper work, which is good, but the oversight needs to be there. Right. It feels like AI's been around, but the pace of change right now seems yeah. different. We hear terms like exponential growth after those AI winters. Yeah, those winters were periods where progress kind of stalled, funding dried up. Overcoming those was key. It was driven by um, big leaps in computing power and, crucially, the availability of massive data sets for training. So this exponential growth. Yeah. It's not just faster, it's fundamentally changing things. I think so. It's changing how we solve problems across so many fields. Medical science, for example, AI's speeding up drug discovery, improving diagnostics, even in literature, analyzing texts, exploring new creative forms. Fascinating. Okay, let's move to an area maybe not everyone thinks about daily, but it's vital for business. Treasury operations. Ah, yes, managing the money. Basically, yeah, cash flow, making sure companies have enough liquid cash on hand. Experts are saying AI and automation are really shaking things up here. They are. Traditionally, Treasury involves a lot of manual work, spreadsheets, forecasts. It's time-consuming and, frankly, prone to errors. So AI steps in to automate the routine stuff? Exactly. Automate routine tasks, but also provide much more sophisticated data analytics. The goal is better speed, better accuracy, better liquidity management. How specifically? Cash flow forecasting is one area mentioned. Right. Instead of relying on historical trends and, let's be honest, sometimes educated guesses, AI can analyze vast amounts of past financial data to predict future cash flow much more accurately. Going from reactive to predictive. That's the key phrase. It lets treasury teams anticipate shortfalls or surpluses much earlier. Better planning, more strategic decisions. And it's not just predicting the future, it's about the now too, right? Real-time data access. Absolutely. AI allows for like an up-to-the-minute view of cash positions. In today's fast markets, waiting for end-of-day reports just doesn't cut it anymore. You need that real-time visibility to make quick, informed decisions. Be agile. Makes sense. And risk management. Fraud detection. Another big one. Financial fraud is getting more sophisticated. AI can analyze massive volumes of transactions, spot anomalies, flag suspicious activity in real time. It's a crucial layer of security. So the takeaway for Treasury seems to be embrace AI and automation for better efficiency, less risk, and smarter decisions. Pretty much. It's still relatively early days for widespread adoption, but the potential transformation is huge. Companies that get on board now will likely be much better positioned. Okay, let's widen the lens again. Computer vision. AI that lets computers see and interpret images. The market growth here is just explosive. The numbers are staggering, aren't they? Valued at over $24 billion in 2023. Projected to hit nearly $174 billion by 2032. That's a compound annual growth rate of almost 25%. Yeah, it really shows the power of this technology. It's being driven by the demand for automation everywhere. Huge improvements in image recognition, thanks to AI, deep learning advancements. And it's impacting key industries, right? Healthcare, automotive. Definitely. Healthcare, for things like detecting diseases earlier from scans, more precise diagnoses. Automotive is massive driver assistance systems, autonomous vehicles. They rely entirely on computer vision. We're also seeing it in smart retail, surveillance. Right. Retail uses it for inventory, understanding customer behavior, surveillance for security. The applications are incredibly broad. And the big tech players are all involved. NVIDIA, Intel, Microsoft, Google. Yeah, they're the ones with the R&D muscle, the infrastructure, the funding. NVIDIA's GPUs, for instance, are critical. But it's also the whole ecosystem, research labs, startups getting funding. It all fuels this growth. Okay, now let's zero in on something specific that's generating a lot of buzz. OpenAI's Codex. This sounds like it could really change how software gets made. It's definitely positioned as a major step. The core idea is AI that understands instructions in plain English and then generates the code, making coding more intuitive, potentially. More than just autocomplete. Much more. It's aiming to bridge that gap between what a developer wants to do and the complex syntax needed to actually do it. We saw notes from Pixel Crayons highlighting the limits of traditional coding time, errors, and seeing AI tools like Codex as the solution. Right. And they mention Emma Joseph, specializing in blockchain and AI, which points to how these advanced techs are merging to create new solutions. Codex streamlining coding could massively boost efficiency. There's also a specific project, Codex CLI, for developers who work in the terminal. Yeah, command line interface. 
It basically brings chat GPT level reasoning into the terminal workflow. It can run code, manage files, work with Git for version control, all within a secure sandbox. Sounds powerful. It can refactor code, generate database migrations, write unit tests. Even explain complex things like regular expressions, suggest improvements via pull requests, do basic security reviews. These are all tasks that eat up developer time. Automating the grunt work, potentially. That's the idea, freeing up developers for higher level thinking. And it works with standard tools like Git, which is important for fitting into existing workflows. The requirements seem fairly standard Node.js, major OS support. And you can configure it, choose different AI models. Yeah, that's a plus. It supports models from OpenAI, Azure, Google, even open source options. Gives developers flexibility. You can tweak how it asks for approval, handles errors, sends notifications. And OpenAI is encouraging others to contribute. Which is smart. Community involvement helps find bugs, add features, make it more robust, especially for an experimental tool like this. Okay, looking at other news sources, just AI news, mentioned some big funding rounds. $43 million for Granola, an AI workspace, and $6 million for Plexus for AI legal automation. Yeah, that shows the investment pouring into AI across different sectors. Collaboration tools, legal tech, AI is seen as a key driver pretty much everywhere. Just AI news also keeps an eye on the broader picture impact across cybersecurity, finance, but also the ethics, policy, privacy stuff. Which is vital. It's not just about the tech. It's the whole societal context. Essential to track that. Over on YouTube, the AI Revolution channel covered Codex 2, confirming it's a research preview for pro, team, and enterprise users. Right. Integrated into chat GPT. Makes sense to roll it out that way first, gather feedback. They described it as a full-stack dev in a secure cloud sandbox. No external internet access, but it connects to GitHub repos. Yeah. The autonomy is key. It can apparently handle tasks, end-to-end -end writing features, fixing bugs, running tests autonomously. The secure sandbox is crucial for protecting code. And you can watch it work in real time. Logs, test results. Transparency, yeah. See what's doing. It's powered by a model called Codex 1, a version of O3 fine-tuned specifically for coding using reinforcement learning. Trained on real coding tasks. Which hopefully makes it generate more practical, effective code. They mentioned benchmarks too. Codex 1 apparently hitting 75% pass rate on some tasks. Mm. Better than the standard O3 high model. That's a measurable improvement shows progress in generating reliable code. And apparently it needs minimal setup, though you can give it hints with special files to navigate repos better. AI Revolution also touched on Anthropic potentially updating Claude, maybe towards true agentic behavior. Ah, yes. Agents that can reason and act autonomously, formulate plans, use tools, iterate with less direct prompting. That's a big trend. And Google, of course, putting AI into search. Overviews are here, an AI mode coming. Right, conversational search powered by Gemini changing how we find information online. It's a response to these powerful conversational AIs. Another YouTuber, David Andrej, was even more bullish, called Codex the most powerful AI coding agent ever created, a threat to existing tools. Strong words, but it highlights the potential disruption and putting it right inside ChatGPT makes it super accessible. He stressed it's cloud-based, asynchronous handles multiple tasks at once, drafting pull requests, finding bugs, reviewing code, writing tests. Yeah, the cloud power lets it do heavy lifting concurrently. Covering so much of the development life cycle is impressive. He also mentioned the slightly better benchmarks for Codex 1 and showed it working on a real production code base. Seeing it in action on real code is always more convincing than just benchmarks. And the remote operation thing using it from your phone because it runs in a virtual environment in OpenAI's cloud. That's a big flexibility win for developers. Work from anywhere. The isolated environment keeps things clean. India Today echoed much of this accessible via ChatGPT. Tasks take 130 minutes, real-time monitoring, isolated workspaces, ability to modify files and run commands. Consistent reporting. The picture of how it operates is becoming clearer. It's not just code generation, it's interacting with the dev environment. ZDNet framed it as enabling a real coding mindset change beyond autocomplete to AI writing whole segments analyzing systems. That's the potential shift. If AI handles more complexity reliably, developers focus shifts to architecture, high-level design. But ZDNet also raised concerns. Impact on junior programmers. Losing learning opportunities if you rely too much on AI. Very valid points. Productivity gains are great, but what about entry-level roles? How do people learn fundamentals? Yeah. The industry needs to think about that. Training will have to adapt. Singularity Hub just summed it up neatly. 
translates everyday language into computer code. Gets to the core of it, yeah. Making programming more accessible. Looking at Reddit discussions, a real mix of reactions. Excitement, definitely. But also frustration that it's a limited preview, not available for regular Plus users yet. Totally understandable. High anticipation meets controlled rollout. Happens all the time with new tech. There was also debate about the name OpenAI, given its commercial direction. And questions about limitations, can it really run and test complex apps? Concerns about cloud reliance, GitHub integration. All fair questions. The open versus commercial tension is ongoing. People want to know the practical limits, the dependencies. But some Redditors who do have access are calling it amazing. Lots of calls for a VS Code plugin too. Early positive feedback is promising, and the VS Code request makes total sense. Integration is key for adoption. Of course, you also get the usual unsubstantiated claims online. Right. Okay, last big chunk of news was a compilation. Some odd bits like a disappearing Alexa Plus news, mention of AI art by Chris Kashtanova, and Google's AlphaVolve. AlphaVolve sounds fascinating. An AI that invents solutions, improved data centers, AI chips sped up Gemini training. That's potentially groundbreaking if it scales. Then there was Microsoft's build event. Open Agentic Web Vision, Copilot updates, new tools, but also those Microsoft layoffs hitting software engineers leading to speculation. Yeah, the timing raises questions, doesn't it? While not explicitly linked by Microsoft, people wonder about the connection between advancing AI coding tools and engineering roles. It's a complex issue. Also mentioned, multi-agent stuff in M365 Copilot, Claude Code SDK, NVIDIA's big AI campus plans for Europe, the SAG after a complaint about the AI Darth Vader voice. That voice issue is a big one for actors and voice artists. Shows the IP and ethical challenges spreading. A study showing GPT-4 winning debates more often with demographic data, funding for TensorWave and Semite AI, AI jobs at Meta and Reddit, prompt tutorials, Gemini on Nest Audio, loads of stuff. It really highlights the sheer breadth of AI activity enterprise, creative, ethics, hardware, jobs, that it's touching everything. Even that anecdote about O3 as a career coach. Unexpected application. We also saw info on top open source large language models for 2025, highlighting benefits like cost, customization, transparency, community innovation, data security. Models like Lamina 3, Gemma 2, Command R plus day. Yeah, open source is hugely important. It democratizes access. Companies aren't solely reliant on proprietary models. The benefits you listed are real advantages. The discussion covered innovations in training data, model architecture, tuning techniques, multimodal abilities, plus responsible deployment, ethics, safety, community support via Hugging Face in GitHub, future trends like multilingualism, efficiency, hybrid solutions, even guidance on building your own. It's a whole ecosystem. Great to see that depth looking not just at the tech, but also the responsible use and community aspects. Yeah. Empowering people to build and customize is key. And finally, that report about a potential 10-year block on state-level AI regulation enforcement in the U.S. budget bill, with pushback from state AGs and groups like Mozilla, EPEC. That's a major potential development on the regulation front, the classic tension. Innovation versus consumer protection and safety. Limiting state oversight could have big consequences given how fast AI is moving. The outcome is uncertain, sounds like. And just to note that UT Austin is proposing AI guidelines for teaching and learning, so education is grappling with this too. Absolutely. Universities, schools, everyone needs to figure out how to integrate AI responsibly and ethically. So wrapping this all up, what's the big picture? We've seen AI moving fast from theory to reality, predicting pandemics, automating coding with tools like OpenAI's Codex, which, yes, was the pop his answer. Yeah. The pace is just staggering. It really is. But with great power comes, well, you know, crucial questions about ethics, regulation, the impact on jobs, on how we live. That debate over state versus federal regulation really highlights the core tensions. This deep dive, as always, just scratches the surface. We definitely encourage you to explore the sources further. What stands out most to you listening? What benefits or risks did we miss? Yeah, definitely keep exploring. And maybe a final thought to chew on. As AI keeps evolving, maybe even learning to invent its own solution like Alpha Evolve. Hmm. How does our fundamental relationship with technology change? And what new responsibilities does that place on all of us?